And good morning, broadcasting live from the Manor with Dr. JJ. St. Patrick's Day continues. If you want to join the parade later, you can. So I hear extended hours for pubs and green beer and all the likes. And also it's Persian New Year coming up as well as the as equinox, as many people will be invited to walk and wonder and discover. As we gather for worship, we acknowledge and thank the Huron-Wendat Nation, the Métis Nation of Ontario, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nation, and Six Nations of the Grand River as our community partners and traditional inhabitants of the lands of the City of Toronto, the region of Hamilton, Durham Region, and the surrounding areas. May we extend the gift of the Spirit spoken from the heart for today. And we continue to bring in announcements and what's happening in our new day as we invite uh, Betty Kalman and, and also Allison. Let me move the microphone over for you, Betty. This is good. Hey. So I will ask, uh, good morning. Can you hear Betty? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Well, I'm just looking at this sea of wonderful faces out here today. And we're seeing you instead of on Zoom in real life. So welcome back, come here. And welcome back our family. And who else? Susie. And who else do I see? Jill, this is wonderful. I'm just, I, I've learned to embarrass people. So just, just, just put up with me. Uh, we did have a request for a uh, prayer addition of Roy Atkinson in Thunder Bay, who is a friend of one of our congregation members. And we, we pray for them. Also, I've been talking with various members of our um, congregation about health issues. And as always, uh, the mysteries of navigating healthcare in Canada can be very interesting. Uh, as an ex member of the profession, as a nurse, I'm no longer working actively, but if you ever need help trying to understand what it is that's being done or what you need to do if for questions of your doctors or things like that, call on me. I'm happy to say. The greatest thing about pastoral care work is I've been walking with many people in many health areas and I've learned so much. I just wish I knew it when I was working, uh, how we came across to people who didn't quite understand what was being said and, and so on. I said, I used to do my own rounds after we did our physician rounds to explain what had just been said. So they, they always tease me and say, Betty, why do you always go back and talk to the patients? I said, because we need to understand. So I'm here for that sort of thing. Uh, I'm going to also ask for a congregational care group prayer for, for the group that is working congregational care. We are de dealing with one of our elders who probably needs to go into uh, help in, in a different way instead of living home privately. So I'm going to ask for your prayers as we walk this journey with her and we try to guide in the best way we can. Additionally, um, we have from Greg. Thanks and gratitude for his mom, June, who is at Soldiers Memorial Hospital in Aurelia. She is slowly responding to therapy and getting better. And so thanks and gratitude that June is on recovery, but we will keep her in our prayers. Uh, we also continue to pray, Mike, for your family, for Elijah and Richard, and also for Bev, uh, Susan's mom, who did go into residential, uh, a new residence, a new home this week, and is starting a new life in that place. Um, for the world, we continue. Oh, I missed somebody. I thought I saw Judy. Judy, welcome back. We understand you've recovered from your your 
trauma with COVID, as we many of us have experienced, and I'm glad it wasn't too bad a version. It's lovely to have you back with us today, and all the best to John as well. Um, the other, uh, uh, now for their world prayers, we continue to pray for Iran, for Rizal and Amir's families, uh, for the people of Iran. We pray for Ukraine, for Haiti, Myanmar, Yemen, Sudan, the list gets longer, Lesotho. Uh, this week we added the prayers for the people of Malawi who faced Cyclone Freddy and are dealing with the consequences of the cyclone in their country, having more than 500 deaths there related to that. We pray for the people of Amque, Quebec, who are still mourning the losses of the people in their community. I think that um, that will, will be it for our prayers, which we continue. There are many, many other people on our list that we do continue to pray for. Uh, and again, this week, Carolyn Smith is celebrating her birthday, of which I am still not allowed to reveal her age. But uh, she is a most magnificent, wonderful uh, person in our congregation. I think her mother lived to 108. So I'll let you guess that Carolyn's got good genes and long genes. Yeah, you got it. Okay, and that's it for today. Thank you, Betty. Allison, you want to make your way up? Just to, as Betty was talking about, when I was seven years old, they asked me, are you vomiting today? What does a seven-year-old know about vomiting? No, anyway. Very good point. Good morning. <laughs> so my name is Allison Marcaccini, and I'm the Children's Ministry Coordinator here. And this week for the children on Wednesday morning from 10 until 11, we have little rainbow fish drop in. So we have free play and um, circle time and everyone is welcome to come and enjoy community and play time. And then on Thursday evening for our youth, so those are kids who are like 11 years old and up, we are having our youth gathering from 7 until 8 p.m. And on Sunday, we have our special meal prep and play time from 3 until 5. So next Sunday, email me at manorroadkids at gmail.com if you're interested in it. We are going to be doing some meal prep for the week. Uh, my friend Margarita, who is a Mexican chef, will be leading us and teaching us how to make Ta like real tortilla shells, corn tortillas, chicken soup. We're going to make all these things. And then the kids will have supervised play in the meantime. And uh, we have about eight spots and the spots are filling up. So please let me know if you're interested. We're going to be splitting the groceries for that one. I think that's it for uh, kids and youth. I think Betty has another announcement. Yeah, I forgot to say, sorry. I realized we've got new faces here and we do have these lovely name tags that say who we are. And so it would be a nice thing to wear those as we greet people and they can get to know names. And John Joseph, if somebody is new here and hasn't got a name tag, what do we do? We talk to me and I get my friend Joe to make. Excellent. Okay. So if you don't have a name tag, let me know and I'll, I'm John Joseph and we'll make sure you, you also have one so we can know names much better. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. All right. So great things happening. And then uh, continue with what's happening this week. We have our executive meeting on Tuesday, midday prayer at noon. And the next Sunday, we're going to try something slightly different. We're calling it Church Unplugged. All that will mean is we're going to have one camera in the corner aimed at the front and uh, fewer people uh, activating what's here in, in person. But we're looking at trying to put the green room back in the green room and the front of the house back in the front of the house using theatrical terms. So we'll see how that goes. We'd love your feedback. And we continue on. Lots of activities coming this week. Can you just advance the slide, Sharon? And then that was meal making. The next slide. And talking about homelessness, March 29th, it's at Rosedale United. So if you want to go be part of that and learn more about panelist discussions of how we can help the unhoused in our community. And the next slide. International Day of Pink, that's April the 16th. Many have heard or well, welcome. And here we, uh, wrote, uh, we had the uh, Stonewall back in 1969. This is a person who is still living from Stonewall, is going to share his experience, what's happened, 
then and now, just to share with you, two moms we know who live in Whitby, there's actually on Monday, what a horrible thing, there's going to be, we'll call it the ultra-right gathering outside of school to protest teaching LGBTQ rights in Whitby. Now, the good news is, I have a friend who's on the police force, who's the, we'll call him the rainbow connection person, who's going to connect them with the people in Durham. Because the reality is, unless we stand together, we watch things change back to how they were. And it doesn't take much. We watch that with women's rights and many other rights. So together, we make a difference today. And let's slide forward. And the portion, that's what it looked like a couple of years ago when we were locked up and we, we were trying to remind people, yes, we are here. We had wonderful shamrocks. So yes, the porch at the manor celebrating St. Patrick's Day. Let's continue forward. And remember our pantry. Now, Ayla, how did it look today? Okay. Just to remind everybody, that's our, that's good. That's good. Thanks. That's a little free pantry. You you get one and give one and people take a few. But I think before you look and always remember when you're at the grocery store and just wandering around the neighborhood, just come and put more items in. It's a quite exciting way to help and make a difference. And we now begin with our call to worship. God does not see us as mortals. Sorry, Betty. We look on the outward appearance. God looks on the heart. Give us eyes to see. Once we lived in darkness, but now as children of light, we're called to what is good and right and true. And just before we enter into opening prayer, my friendly reminder, Easter Sunday, we will have an Easter egg hunt at nine o'clock. That's Easter Sunday. So put that in your calendars. God. Holy God, why is it that we look but do not see? Yes, again, again, it's your life. So your ways become visible to us and we're Touch us so that we are utterly changed before and after, and now and then. Then we also say, one thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. Lord, we believe, help our unbelief, in Christ's light we pray. Amen. And we call on the one for Allison and me to extinguish the candle, but in liturgical season, Increasing darkness, we extinguish a candle each week. And on these very special Sundays, we think more deeply about Jesus. Sometimes it's hard to know what to do to be a loving person. And as we tell the story of Jesus, we learn how to be guided and kept safe in God's care. And let's together say these words. We extinguish the fourth candle. We remember how hard it is to keep faith strong in a troubled world. And you, 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 put, you put out the pink candle. Later Sunday. Okay. All right.
Thank you. Okay. And as we watch the smoke rise, remember that God is with us all the way. Gracious God, we are people who still love darkness rather than light. We keep shameful deeds secret, but flaunt for occasional acts of virtue. We see ourselves as blameless, but pass judgment on others. We do not stand firmly enough with those who are vulnerable, but set back protecting ourselves. Forgive us, we pray. As it's your life that we may see ourselves rightly. Bring us into your light that we may know ourselves loved. Amen. This is your light that we may live more fruitful lives. Keep raising us up, we pray, from the deadness of sin and shine upon us with your grace. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, the light of the world, amen. The psalmist assures us that God's goodness and mercy will follow us, even pursue us all the days of our life. Receive this goodness and mercy and live a new life in the grace of Jesus Christ. We will live as children of the light, for Christ shines on us. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. Please extend the peace of Christ. Dance with the Spirit early in the morning. Walk with the Spirit throughout the long day. Work and hope for a new life of born. Listen to the Spirit showing the way. Dance with the Spirit. Alan Allison. Good morning. Okay. We are now in the fourth Sunday of Lent. And just ahead of us is the excitement of Palm Sunday, the pain of Good Friday, and the joy of Easter. But first, we have more to learn from the stories of Jesus' life. Now, today, Jesus is breaking the rules again. Mm hmm, it's true. In the reading from John on the Sabbath, Jesus spits in the mud and he rubs it into the eyes of a blind man and tells the blind man to go and wash his eyes in the water. The blind man goes and washes his eyes in the water. And lo and behold, he can see again. Can you believe that? It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Now, who could be angry with Jesus for doing that? Mm. They were angry at Jesus. Because... Many people in Jesus' day believed that the blind deserved their condition because of something that they or their family had done. And to cure them to work on the Sabbath was a sin. 
Jesus had broken two rules and the Pharisees were not happy with him. No, it seems ridiculous to us to blame a person born blind for their condition, and we can laugh and shake our heads and roll our eyes at people from those days, but what are our blind spots today? Can you think of anything that we think is okay today, rules that we have that are really kind of blind spots? Where do we misdirect shame and blame? How about children who are born into poverty or people who are hungry, who are working for minimum wage, struggling to find housing and steady employment? When they take food from a store rather than starve, they're breaking the law. When they sleep on a park bench or form a tent city, they can be arrested, their belongings trashed, their temporary communities destroyed. A couple of years ago, when the police decided to clear a tent city in Trinity Bellwoods Park, a friend of Tom's went down to film the protest. The protesters linked arms in front of the homeless encampment, trying to protect them from the police. And they shouted, who do you protect? They shouted at the police, who do you protect? Now, who is breaking the law? When there is enough food for everyone, is it against the law to keep that food away from the hungry? When there are enough homes to house everyone in this city right now, is it against the law to keep them empty and to allow people to sleep on the street? No. Nope. But what would Jesus say to these so-called rules? The answers are as not, not as easy as just reaching down and picking up some mud and spitting on it and rubbing it on our broken society. But as Christians, we are called to follow Jesus and reject laws that stand against love and justice and make a new way. Now, later on in the service, when the children and I are over in the nursery, everyone here is going to sing Amazing Grace. And this song was written by, I think, John Newton, who um, used to be a slave trader. And he was following the rules of his day. He was going and taking people against their will to this new world and selling them as slaves. But he had a major conversion and he wrote this beautiful song, Amazing Grace, saving him from the old laws and moving into God's laws. So this week, let's look around ourselves and see what is love and justice. What are we living under? And let's work towards making a more beautiful society for everybody. Amen. Thank you, Allison. And gracious God, illumine our hearts and minds as the scriptures are read and proclaimed so that the, by the power of your Holy Spirit, you may see what is good and right and true. Blessing, help us to do what's pleasing to you, so that your glory becomes visible in our words and deeds. Amen. First reading is from 1 Samuel, um, chapter 16, verses 1 to 13. 
the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out, and I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint me, the one whom I named to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. And when they came, he looked on Eli and thought, surely the Lord anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadad. The Lord has not chosen any and made him pass before Samuel, he said. Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to, uh, said two of these, all are all your sons here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome, the Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. Chapter 3. Our second reading is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 to 14. For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. And before I forget, I did have a station announcement. We have the wonderful Jennifer Palin, who uh, I'll just undo your announcement for you, has been a workshop on March 31st on the art of Andy Warhol and Lent. And John chapter 9. The passages during Lent are remarkable, aren't they? They're sort of rich with story. You can almost see a wee bit of comedy coming in. And here we go with John. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, his man or his parents, that he was born blind? 
And Jesus answered him, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me. And while it is day, night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And when he said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes and saying to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. And then he went and washed and came back to see. And the neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. And others were saying, no, but it's someone like him. And, and he kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? And he answered, the man called Jesus made mud and spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. And then I went and washed and he received my sight and then said to him, where is he? And he said, I do not know. And they brought him to the Pharisees, the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day and when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, he put mud on my eyes and then I washed and now I see and some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a, a, a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, he is a prophet. And the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the man. And the parents of the man who had received the sight. And as they asked them, is this your son who is say he was born blind? And how then does he now see? His parents answered, we know that this is our son, that he was born blind. But we do not know how is it is that he now sees, nor we don't know who did this. And he opened his eyes and asked him, he is of age and he will speak for himself. And his parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. And therefore his parents said, he is of age. Ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. And he answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. And they said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered them, I've told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? You also want to become his disciples, they asked him. And then they revealed and reviled him, saying, you are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. And the man answered, here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes, and you not know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does. Listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could not do this thing and nothing. And they answered him, you were born entirely in sin. And are you trying to tell us? And teach us, and they drove him out. And Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is tell me so that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. And Jesus said, I came in the world for judgment, so that those who do not see me may see. And these do not may see become blind. And some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? And Jesus said, If you were blind, you would not sin. But now you say, We see. Your sin remains. Hear the wisdom told to us through the ages.
There is something about this time of year and the readings that we share, so rich and layered with many understandings and many meetings. The idea of the Sabbath and what it is or isn't, if we remember not that long ago in Toronto, everything was closed on Sundays. You couldn't play cards or buy groceries. Oh, how the days have changed. Let us pray. God, we speak of Sabbath. And when we look at anointing, it's about here and now. Help us listen in the here and now, today. That word anointing is a very powerful word, is it not? It speaks of something you might do at baptism or sometimes when you go to the, visit the sick and something about learning and sharing and growing together, anointing someone. And we hear in the words today, in the passage of sandal anointing, we ask the question, and I hear the words proclaim, we are the anointing hands, our left and right hand. We bring that gift of healing when we speak and greet and learn from each other. It's as if we climb a mountain and look beyond and ask a question, how can we welcome beyond where we can see in the here and now? But we hear the words that God speaks to Samuel, rise and anoint to be the prophetic voice. And think of the context. The leader in Israel saw it's not working out so well. Where have we heard that conversation before then and now? It's not working out so well here at home and abroad, and yet Samuel's commission to go choose another leader, not an easy thought, especially in a day where the king was the leader and the sovereign one. It's a bit like a coup d'etat, where you almost be committing treason, so to speak. But in this wonderful passage, he goes to visit Jesse with many sons. And it's, again, that story of God choosing the unlikely, the youngest, not the oldest. Choosing the untouchable or perhaps the one who is not the most familiar. And again, here we have being invited to the sacrifice. It's as if we're invited to the beginning of Jesus' movement, the Samuel movement, and taking a risk and right rushing out on a road we have not yet traveled before. As we hear that Jill read today, live as children of the light in the here and now. Live and be and grow. One of uh, my good friends shared with me the art of Mary Hamilton, who was the first woman commissioned to depict battle scenes in time of war. And she did this not to raise up war, but so that we might know what had taken place. So that we could learn from these scenes and know that we need to steer away from war. But just as we offer peace to be about peace in the here. And now today, and we hear today also that Jesus walked along on that road and was ready to heal and discover again. And we, we every day we're walking along that road, are we not? And my friend Melissa Nadeau, I was sharing a couple of Sundays ago, but I'll share it again. She was filled, her food bank in Georgia was filled to overflowing. Imagine what a problem to have, so to speak. And she said, do you know anybody that needs food? I said, look in the streets of Toronto, every food bank, our pantry needs help. And a, and a good friend, we always need a good friend, Leonard. My good friend, Leonard, is a, a Jewish man who lives in Regent Park, who knows everybody. We always need a friend to know everybody, don't we? A, a connector. And Leonard, Leonard, do Leonard, you know a food bank that needs help? Yes, I do. I know about 20. I connected Melissa and Leonard online, and next thing you know, the food had a place to go. You see, we can circumvent administrivia. Because don't we, just like then and now, we make things sometimes way too complicated, don't we? As Betty shares about healthcare, we make it way too complicated. As we make giving food to people sometimes way more complicated than need be. And here at Manor Road, the pantry is wonderful. You don't have to sign up for an appointment. You don't have to uh, prove that you're worthy to get the food. You don't have to prove you can give this food. Just do it and it happens. Mm -hmm. And sometimes life needs to be just that as it is. But then we hear but Jesus putting mud on the eyes. And some may ask, are we permitting children to have mud fights now? Is this what we're doing? No, it's mud is made with it's dirty. Yes, it is, but we know we need it. When we when we traveled, when I traveled to Israel, the Dead Sea is full of mud and you get to swim there. I remember the third time I decided I'm going to go dive head first. Don't do that. If you're ever in Israel, don't you know why? Because the, the water is. 20, 30 times saltier than normal. I remember shutting my eyes and that salty water went and I was going doing this and someone had to guide me back to shore after I covered mud all over myself because the mud 
in the Dead Sea is actually healing mud. You don't believe me? Go pay five hundred dollars for a jar of Dead Sea mud on Yorkville. Such good mud. We have the same mud in Saskatchewan, but we haven't learned how to market it. So if you have a new, if you have a new retail plan, go to Saskatchewan. Charge ten dollars for the Saskatchewan mud. See how much money you can make. But there's something about play and nutrients, is there not? about learning that ancient people knew this, but we, we sometimes and quite often in the, in the name of religious right and truth, we put those people aside, we even burn them at the stake for healing what we call outside the church. But that's what Jesus, and even healing on the Sabbath, as if healing on the Sabbath was a bad thing. But yet here's Jesus pushing at the edges of life then and now. We hear about Paul pushing at the edges, making all things visible and invisible and trying to make sense that we are the anointed hands, the anointing hands, the left and the right. We are that gift of being the prophetic voice of rising and anointing for the people that we know that need this right now, of being invited to the sacrifice, of being the children of light, of walking along with Jesus and hearing the words of the man, I was blind. But now I see. And some people may never physically see again, but yet they see as if for the first time. How many times have you gone in a corner of your house when your partner or someone says, where is that? And you say, it's beside the what's it, beside the who's it. Somehow you know the language. And for me, I pray to St. Anthony because I know I touched that thing and I remember I saw it again. But seeing as if for the first time we walk by a familiar place, or see a face we have yet to learn, discover. Last yesterday, I had the humble honor of attending the funeral of my good friend, Bob Martin, who was very much part of the Pride community in the city of Toronto at Glen Road United. And there I saw many people I had not seen before. And at the back of the church, they had taken many items from, from Bob's uh, condo or apartment, a table full of wonderful trinkets. You'll like this. I, did, I fought off the temptation to take home something. Oh, getting better. But there was two racks of clothing, of Bob's drag paraphernalia. I only took a rainbow scarf. Well, have you know? So there's many other things to take. But Bob was a person who was a great gift in the life of many people. And as I quoted in the funeral, I quote for you now, as the, the words of Auntie Mame, life's a banquet and most SOBs are starving. Bob was a gift of life for many people in the here and now today. When we look to God breaking in, and discovering something is about the language of the heart that changes our world, arise, anoint. To be that breath, that fresh new beginning, that understanding of where we can go and where we can turn. When we go to funerals and discover people that we haven't met, the friends, the extended family, something happens and we feel that great fresh new breathing air coming from within. As we hear today, in the passage about Jesus healing, being, making blind people see, about Samuel taking that oil and bringing it to anoint David, the youngest and the most unlikely to be the child who would lead and grow and be together. This week, I heard the teachings of Thompson Highway, who spoke about laughter. You think laughter in the Cree tradition, laughter sometimes gets a bad rap, doesn't it? Because are we supposed to laugh? Yes, no. But laughter is healing. I remember it was grade five. I was kicked out of the class for laughing. We were supposed to have a silent reading moment. And who walked by? My mother, who was on staff in the library. What are you doing there? It's not so great when your mother's on staff at the school. I just laughed. Well, you shouldn't do that. But I say, yes, you should. And yes, Jesus says you shall. And Thompson Highway says, yes, you should. Because we are the anointing hands who bring gift and growth to this day about learning to be children of the light, learning to be again, learning to bring that gift of healing and growing together. As if we reach out our tendrils and find something healing and discovering the great gift of the here and now, we are the anointing hands to invite to the sacrifice. We are the anointing hands to live as children of light. We are the anointing hands to walk along with Jesus on that road we are the anointing hands of the blind who said, now I see for the first time. It's a movement of divine love for us all in the here and now. Rise and anoint, says Samuel.
rise and anoint to be the gift, to find that moment of God breaking in to our heart and lives, rise and anoint to be the anointing hands by the words that we offer to each other in the here and now and dance in the air. And a poem that a friend of mine shared with me this week, it's called Healing Hands. Healing Hands. It says this, give comfort to those who grieve. They give crippled soldiers strength to walk. And when time gets hard, they turn to God and talk. My nurse is blessed with God's love, even when they put on those gloves. The magic that's performed with those healing hands saved many wounded soldiers in this land. It seems their work is never done in the streets because of gangs and guns. Many lives have been saved by those healing hands. We are the anointing healing hands of God's love here today. Verse 83. For the great diversity of creator, creator, we come to you with both the joys and the sorrows of our hearts. We are grateful for the gift of life and the joy that it can bring, for families and friends who love us, for allies who stick up for us, even when we cannot risk sticking up for ourselves. For the great diversity you have created in our world. We pray for those who suffer from discrimination because of their gender identity or sexual orientation by their skin color. Who worry about their employment or who cannot find a job. For those who must hide who they are to find housing. For those who are not safe on our streets. For those who do not feel safe in their place of worship. Help us to end homophobia, transphobia, and biphobia, and all forms of discrimination and hate. Show us the way to make this world a better place for all. May we take this time now to receive our offering.
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to Lord God. In gratitude, O God, we come to your table, into your presence, into your house for all that you have done for us, and most especially for bringing us in the light of Jesus Christ. We offer our thanks and praise. We long to live as children of the light, doing what is pleasing to you and bearing the fruit of the light. Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Glory to God. God, our faithful shepherd, we depend on you for everything we need, for healing and injury and comfort and sorrow. You respond in abundant provision and thank you for your tender care of us. Thank you for soothing the wounds of this life. Thank you that in the presence of enemies, especially the last enemy of death, you are with us as shepherd, host, home, knowing your faithfulness in our lives and we bring before you the lives of others, the care of this world. And trusting all things to your goodness and mercy, bring healing to those who are ill in mind, body, or spirit. And bring release to those who are held captive by old hurts or new bonds that oppress and entangle. Bring freedom to those unjustly accused, relief to those burdened with debt, comfort to all who suffer from abuse of any kind. Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. This will go before us and the glory of God will be our rear guard. We pray for people living precariously in the midst of war. Protect, we pray, citizens and soldiers alike, and teach us to put away our weapons, taking up instead words of peace and reconciliation. And by the power at work in Christ, break down the walls of hostility we build so that we may learn to live together graciously. Remember those living in the midst of drought and famine. We pray for rain to fall and crops to grow, and for generosity to overflow from our own hands. And resources until all your children receive their daily bread, until all your children have clean water to drink, until all your children have adequate shelter and medical care. Compel us to be better stewards of creation so that our habitation is sustainable and responsible, loving God. Help us to see the world as, as great love, to see the world as you see, see others as you see them, and to see ourselves rightly too. Because you have come into this world for judgment, we can leave our judgment behind. Pursue us with your goodness and faithfulness and faithful love. And until love fills every heart and informs every action, we pray these things in the name of the one who came that we might see. We pray for people living precariously in the midst of war. Protect, we pray, citizens and soldiers alike, and teach us to put away our weapons, taking up instead words of peace and reconciliation. And by the power at work in Christ, break down the walls of hostility, we build so that we may learn to live together graciously. Remember those living in the midst of drought and famine. We pray for rain to fall and crops to grow. And for.
generosity to overflow from our own hands and resources until all your children receive their daily bread, until all your children have clean water to drink, until all your children have adequate shelter and medical care. Compel us to be better stewards of creation so that our habitation is sustainable and responsible. Loving God, help us to see the world as you see it, to see others as you see them, and to see others ourselves rightly too. Because you have come into this world for judgment, we can leave our judgments behind. Pursue us all with your grace and faithful love until the goodness and faithful love fills every heart and informs every action. We pray for these things in the name of the Christ, the one we might see. As a mother nurtures her children, let us pray. Father, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> As we prepare to go, we heard the story about being put in jail for stealing a loaf of bread. We remember Les Miserables, Jean Valjean, put in jail for stealing a loaf of bread. Yet we know there are times where the community pushes at the edges, heals on the Sabbath, takes the youngest to make them leader, and together we find God and Christ in our midst today. Amen. Wherever you